my, in my time last year, just a few months ago, using the S20 FE and the Note 20 Ultra, I had more fun. I have I had a more enjoyable experience with the S20 FE. That's not to say that the Note's not a good device. It's a beautiful device. I have the Note 10 Plus right here. I like the Note line. But that kind of brings me to the subject of tonight's stream. The rise of the mid-range device. Now, some people call this, call them budget devices. Some people call them value devices. Uh, mid-range devices is a good description. Um, when I worked in the industry selling cell phone accessories, we used to call them tier two or tier three devices. Um, and that what that basically meant is, for example, uh, again, using Samsung as an example, uh, you would have your top of the line for the year. So your top of the line devices for the year were always the Galaxy uh, S line, uh, you know, whether it was Galaxy S seven or eight or not, you know, nine, and then, you know, went, you know, 10, and then we went to 20 and then 21. Uh, and then obviously the note. So those were your, those were your flagships, your top, your tier one. And then your tier twos would be like your galaxy J's, your galaxy A's, your, you know, whatever they were. Right. And because of materials they were using at the time, however, as most of you know, especially with the way things happened in the world last year, or have been going on since last year uh, with everything, um, we have seen that line between your flagship, your top line, your premiums, I guess you want to call it, your best of the best, whatever it is at the time from a manufacturer, and maybe the next tier down. We've seen that line really blur, almost to the point where you go, no, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get this model because it, you know, it's less, and it has just as good specs and, and the same offering and whatnot. A really good example, of this would be Apple products. Uh, whether you get a iPhone 10R, an iPhone 6, an iPhone 7, an iPhone uh, SE, you have the same experience with the software across the board. Uh, when it comes to physicalities like cameras and whatnot, then obviously there's some differences, but everybody gets AirDrop, everybody gets iMessage, uh, and you get all those, what you would expect. Like, so for the most part, if you know iPhones, you could pick up any iPhone and have a good experience with it, right? Where the differences in terms of higher or lower tiers is gonna be the physicality, the size, the battery, the screen type, um, you know, telephoto lenses, not having telephone lenses. It's been really interesting for me to see how things have been kind of changing.